if we want to use document dot add event listener and what we want to do here is add an event listener called dom content loaded so this is going to wait for everything to render specifically our html and css content before it runs any of our JavaScript code. Then we want to create a callback function here within our event listener. Then we're gonna create a constant variable called pizza elements. And within this variable, what we are going to do is we're going to use document dot query selector all so we can get every case of this class that appears on our page here. So what we wanna do is get our add selected class which you guys can see over here is going to be this one. So it's going to be the three elements, specifically the first one that subtracts quantity, the second one that holds the quantity that we select, and the third element that we can increase quantity by clicking on. Next, we wanna create a function called update counter, and this is what we're going to use to update the value of our products when we click the plus or minus. We're going to pass two parameters, the first being our element, and then the next being the value. Then what we want to do is we simply want to change the text content of our element like so and make that equal to the value that we pass in. Next, we want to create a function called handle quantity button. And what this is going to do is it's going to again help us with our increasing and decreasing value here. And we want to pass a button argument here along with an increment argument just like so. And then we want to create a constant variable called counter here, and we're gonna e make this equal to button dot closest, and this is going to listen for the closest occurrence of it, meaning if we click this plus here, it's going to increment this value here. And we're going to grab our add selected class, and then we want to use our query selector here, to grab our class name of counter. So this is going to grab the closest occurrence of our add selected class. And then within that, it's going to query selector for our counter. So basically what's gonna happen is if I click this button here, it's going to affect this quantity or this number here. And then we want to create another variable, but we don't want this one to be a constant. And we're gonna call this current value. And what we wanna do is use our build in parse int function here and what this is going to do is it's going to convert our counter dot text content to an integer from a string next we want to use an if statement and we want to check if increment is true or not then within this if statement we want to use another if statement or you could use the and operator here but i'm just going to go ahead and add another if statement so you guys can clearly see this and we want to check if our current value is less than 10 because we only want the values here to be from one to 10 based on what you select. And then from here, we want to increase our current value. So we're gonna use our current value variable and increment it by one using our plus plus. Then we want to run our update counter function and we're going to pass in our counter and our current value. So now we're successfully calling our update counter function to increase the quantity of this when we click on it. But there's a few more things that we need to do. So connected to our first if statement here, we want to add an else statement. And then we want to check if our current value is greater than zero. And if it's greater than zero, what we wanna do is decrement our current value using our minus minus operator here. And then we also want to run our update counter function again and pass in our counter and our current value as the parameters. Now you're gonna notice if we go over here and try this out, it's not going to do anything because we actually need to add our event and listeners now because 
it's not listening for any events and we're not actually calling this function anywhere. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our pizza elements variable here and this is going to create something that's basically like an array because we're using query selector all. So that means we can use our for each method here which is basically going to be an array loop. And then from here, we're going to create a new function and we're going to pass a parameter called pizza. And then we want to create variables for our minus button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our document dot query selector to get the minus button class from our DOM here. And then we want to do the same thing again, but this time for our plus button class. So I'll just copy and paste it, change my variable name and change my class name so they correctly match. We don't have any errors. Event listener to our minus button using dot add event listener. And we want this to listen for a click event. And then we also want to utilize a callback function here. And now we want to call our handle quantity button function and pass in this, which is going to refer to our minus button here because that's where we're tying the event listener to. Then we also want to pass in false. And then we wanna do this same thing again for our plus button, but instead of passing false, we want to pass plus, and we also want to add this to our plus button here. So now you guys will notice if we go over here and try and use it, it's not actually gonna work because I accidentally tried to pass plus right here and I need to actually pass true document where I should use the parameter that I passed in my function of pizza here. So now if we change that to pizza, you're gonna notice that if we go ahead and try and increment this, that it's going to go ahead and work. Tap here to see what happens next.